Airsofters, it's Robo, and welcome back to another episode of Robo Philosophy, where I give you the tactical and logistical tips and tricks that I use to help me in my airsoft adventures, both on and off the field. Now, in this installment of Robo Philosophies, we're actually going to tackle a subject that I think is uh, fundamentally important to both firearm shooting as well as milsim operations, and that is firing from your offside or support side. Now where this topic originated was, I was actually having a conversation with Task Force Neptune as well as Disposable Heroes uh, on Instagram along with uh, individuals such as Weapon Hit Robson from Blackhawk Rangers and David02. Uh, and actually, funny enough, we were talking about the labeling uh, of this topic. I was kind of, you know, in jest giving uh, Task Force Neptune and Disposable Heroes uh, shit for calling it weak side shooting. I'm just, you know, one of those proponents that doesn't believe in undermining yourself with, uh, with labelings. Yes, by default, it's weaker than my strong side or my fire control side or primary side, uh, but by no means do I want to consider it or think of it in my brain as a weaker side. Does it really matter? No, it totally doesn't. Is it, uh, what matters is the performance aspect and that's what we're gonna cover today. Now, it's something that I believe everyone should know how to do. I think it's, like I said, it's a fundamental topic of discussion uh, that everybody should have in terms of firearms and Milsim uh, ability sets. Now, why isn't it though? Well, ultimately I think the reason why some people avoid the topic of offhand shooting is purely because there's an ability deficit and that's not throwing them anybody under the bus. In terms of ability, uh, when it comes to shooting offhand uh, you know, or offside, uh, the ability has to be worked on in order to gain proficiency. And there's a reason for this. It's actually a very biological and neurological one and we're not gonna spend a ton of time going into the actual science of this stuff today, uh, but I think it's, it's something to, to duly note. The reason why offhand shooting sucks by comparison to your primary uh, or fire control side is you know because of your muscles, your eyes and your brain and just how they function and how they functioned up until the point you start practicing something different. There's basically two concepts here uh, and it all comes down to dominance. Uh, one being you know coordination dominance or your hand dominance uh, or muscle dominance and your eye dominance and how your brain interprets all that and, and actually processes and then drives the, uh, the motor functions of your body. Now, aside from a very small percentage of people who show signs of being co-dominant or ambidominant or ambidextrous uh, in their, their locomotion and, uh, and visual acuity, most of us uh, from birth up until a certain point that we you know, physically and uh, neurologically practice something different, our brains have assigned us, uh, out of ease, a dominant uh, tool to use in terms of physically interacting with our environment. And what I mean by that is each one of us, for the most part, again, excluding those small percentages, have a hand dominance, either their left or their right hand, and an eye dominance, either their, their left or their right eyes. In terms of fine motor controls, that means the dominant appendage is much better at fine movements like writing or uh, controlling a weapon in this case, uh, whereas the other one lacks that just out of misuse or, or ill practice. Uh, when it comes to your eyes, one of your eyes is always going to be dominant. Uh, now, which one is dominant does not matter which hand is dominant in, uh, in some cases. Uh, I know people physically that have a, an opposite dominance problem can cause some problems in firearms. Anybody with that issue in firearms knows of this trouble. Now, what causes dominance? Well, in terms of motor dominance or hand dominance, uh, we're kind of unsure. Most people end up with right hand dominance and we kind of believe that it goes back to what side of your brain controls your body. So that would mean your left side of the brain is more active than the right, but it's neither here nor there. Uh, what that means to you is one side of your motor neurons are gonna, are gonna work better for you controlling the muscles than the other side, which causes the physical dominance problem. Uh, in terms of eye dominance, well, eye dominance comes from a simple fact that because we're, we're binocular vision animals, we see things with both of our eyes in the front of our head, uh, and it's at two different offsets from the object that we're looking at, so we get a 3D picture of that. Uh, it's better for hunting, uh, so if you look at any sort of predatory animal, they generally have forward-facing binocular vision to give them 3D, uh, better 3D uh, spatial awareness for pouncing, hunting, in our case, throwing spears, shooting guns, whatever. Now, but what that does, though, is that it actually builds into our vision 
a natural parallax. It means that our what we're seeing is slightly offset from the thing that's directly in front of us. So what our brain does to compensate for that is it actually assigns one eye dominance over the other uh, and to trust more than the other in order to give a better straight line measurement to the object that we're looking at. Uh, and then the second eye provides the depth element to give us better 3D awareness. And in the end, what that allows our brain to kind of give us the image of is one flat object in 3D space and not two different pictures so slightly offset from one another. And that reliance on a single eye to process most of the visual information is what leads to a problem when we switch to the other eye, their neurological confusion, and that's purely because we've spent such a long time relying and generally only practicing with that one eye. Uh, now, is it easy to switch your eye dominance? No, this is not a video about changing scientifically or medically your eye dominance. So how do you become the best practitioner of gunfighting in either a practical or combat situation? Well, that's learning how to shoot offhand. That way you're not limited to a certain mode or a certain comfort level of shooting to a particular side. So when it comes to actually improving uh, your proficiency with shooting off offhand, uh, or shooting support side, reaction side, again, whatever you want to label it as, just don't call it weak side, then uh, it really comes down to a major factor. And you're, I'm going to repeat this a bunch of times. Practice is ultimately important. Uh, there is no way around changing how your body functions or how it thinks without repetitions. This is why the cliche phrases of practice makes perfect exist. And while that's a really fluffy way of saying something nice about how our brains and bodies work, uh, at the very heart of it, our brain makes neural pathways with our sensory organs as well as our motor uh, our, our, our motor drivers, our muscles, and the muscle nerves uh, through repetition. The more you use it, the more your brain favors that action and therefore makes better pathways or makes it easier for you to actually accomplish that action. So practice is going to make perfect on this one. Uh, so let's cover this in two different sections. Again, going back to the fact that we're generally one side of our body dominant. Uh, so, you know, this is going to talk about right hand do dominance, uh, but you just reverse this if you're a left handed person. Uh, so why does it feel comfortable when we shoot on our right side? Well, it's again, largely because our bodies have practiced uh, actions on our right side uh, since birth and therefore we are better just at fine motor uh, skills on this side, such as controlling the trigger, you know, safeties, uh, you know, mag releases, things like that, even just gripping things. Generally, this is our stronger side in quite literal terms. But what we can do is actually break down what's happening on this side of our body and transplant it to doing the exact same thing on the opposite side, throwing a little bit of practice and we can actually build up the support side, the reactive side uh, motor functions to mirror what we do on the right hand side like we've done all of our lives. When I shoulder my weapon, I use basically the bottom two inches of the stock. I dig it deep into the pectoral and deltoidal uh, kind of crevice right here between your deltoids, your front delts, and your pectoral muscle. And I pull in nice and tight. I keep my chicken wing arm down so it's not chicken winging. And again, I've got my wrist aligned with the fire control system. And I bring, most importantly, the gun up to my face, not my face down to the gun. So can we reverse that in order to replicate those same feelings over time, that comfort over time on our left side. Well, of course we can. What we look to do when we switch to our support side, how we practice that is, we wanna make sure everything down to our stance is then mirrored. Creating habits, physical shapes, physical deployments uh, of our body that support the replication of how it works on our right hand side. That therefore over time through repetitions and practice our bodies get comfortable with it and it actually starts to look the exact same. So again when it comes down to my right handed shooting this is the shape. Okay perfect. So if we go to our left hand side the exact same thing. That's where it really becomes important. Unless you're doing things the exact same you're never going to quite feel comfortable because your brain's always going to be thinking of the comparison between those two actions and you will begin to favor one or over the other yet again. So therefore by practicing these mere physical actions, our brain starts to get the clue that it's important that we do this. 
It's important that this action is completed in the most efficient manner as possible. And therefore, it starts making the neural connections from your brain to your, to your actual motors, your muscles, and the nerves that connect them, to do this more comfortably, which is really just more efficiently. Okay? It's that your body feels more comfortable because it's used to doing something repetitiously. Okay? So that, that is how you fix the motor problem. Okay? The motor problem of, okay, how do I put my gun up and how do I get it up in the exact same fashion every single time? Because that's really all you're doing on the motor side of things. Okay? You're comfortable on your regular side because your body goes, oh, I've done this before. Oh, I've done this before. And therefore, your brain can take over to handle the sensory information coming in while largely putting to the subconscious your motor actions. Right? Set out time to practice mirroring what you do on your right side or your dominant side and doing it on your, your support side. And again, there is no easy way to do this. It takes time, it takes repetitions for your brain to get the clue that it needs to make those neural pathways stronger. So get to practicing, but again, break down what you do on your comfortable side and actually just flip it and mirror it and do the exact same things. Stand the same way, hold the weapon the same way, bring the weapon to your face the same way, align yourself the same way, etc. over and over and over again until it feels just as comfortable as doing it on your physical dominant side. So okay, Robo, I've sat for like six months like a monk and I've, uh, I've reconfigured my physical body and I, can, I feel just as comfortable on my left side as I do on my right side, but my eyes are all screwed up. Well, this is the harder part. Uh, and like I said, you're not gonna actually fix this easily. You're actually just gonna learn how to use it better. Uh, going back to the problem with our vision. Uh, while it's great, we see 3D vision, uh, we don't have eyes on the sides of our heads where, you know, we're just seeing two dimensions. We get to see this, you know, predatory 3D vision that comes with built-in parallax. Uh, and that's actually the problem that happens when you try to, try to aim down a weapon. Now, the problem sort of goes away when you're a one-eyed shooter, but that again, we're eliminating a ton of visual information and depth in, in the shooting equation when we do that. And that's why you, you have this kind of modern issue with don't close one eye when you're shooting unless you're a marksman looking through a, a long piece of glass. Uh, most, most people will say that you should be a two-eyed shooter and that is keeping your support eye open to take in additional information, not just what's down your sight, uh, sight picture. At the same time, having two eyes open actually creates a parallax problem that on your, on your regular shooting side, your strong side shooting side, because your eyes and brain are used to processing information out of a certain eye over the other, isn't such a problem. But once you flip it to your non-dominant eye, your brain starts to get really confused. You'll notice that there's two post sites, okay, or whatever front end site you're using. There's actually two images of those, and nine out of 10 times, if you haven't practiced this, you line up the wrong one and you're actually pointing the gun sort of crooked in reality. I mean, yeah, you're lining something up in your brain in, your, in what's uh, coming in through your eyes in terms of visual information. But in physical reality, you're actually offsetting the gun uh, by a certain angle. Now the reason for that is when you hold up your weapon in proper sight alignment, okay, your support side, your non-dominant side is actually seeing an angled version of reality in front of you. It's not seeing the straight down that your dominant eye is, down your sight alignment and sight picture. It's seeing a, an off angle to that. So what it's doing is actually projecting its imagery, okay, on top of what you're seeing in your sight alignment just to skew by a small small angle. So that's where you get the two front sight apertures, okay? You've got one that's in sight alignment, and then you've got this kind of weird ghost version of it that you're not really paying attention to, at least in your dominant eye at first, uh, but it's still there. If you pay attention, you'll see two different images of your weapon. One down perfect sight alignment, and one sort of ghost image. Where that becomes a huge problem on our support side is our brains generally aren't used to processing the information out of that eye first uh, and therefore it's hard for us to kind of line things up perfectly. So how do we fix that? Well like I said it's not really fixing, you're not changing your dominance here. I'm just going to give you a hot tip to allow you a certain method to practice, practice, practice and therefore get better at recognizing what information needs to be used inside your brain. When you hold up your weapon, whether it's offhand, support side, or your strong side, your primary side, you wanna use the aperture at the front of your weapon 
that is the opposite side of where your weapon is. So that is to say, when I'm using right-sided dominance, I've got my right shoulder into the weapon here, and I've got my right eye looking down the sight picture, the sight alignment, okay? I want to use the image of the front post that is the opposite of where the gun is in my shoulder. Right shoulder, out of the two images of the front sight post, I want to use the left one. On my left shoulder, out of the front two images of the sight post, I want to use my right one. It's a little bit kind of like a rule of opposites to, uh, to kind of put it bluntly. But literally, what, if you pay attention, you've got perfect sight alignment in the dominant side, in this case my right arm, I see two front sight posts. I'm using the left one. On my, on my left side, I'm using the right one. When we're sitting there, mechanically, mechanically practicing our actions to bring our weapons up to our support side, what I want to be concentrating of, and like I said, this isn't changing your eye dominance, it's about paying attention to the information coming in so we can practice using the right information to allow our brains to consciously make the right decision. And that is, as I'm mechanically processing the bringing up of the weapon to my support side, I am consciously making sure that my rear sight aperture and my front sight post are aligned correctly, and that is, left hand, left shoulder, sight, rear sight aperture lines up with the right post image, okay? And you do that time after time after time again. And what you'll find is if you're mechanically practicing these motions while practicing the conscious awareness of the information that you're using in your brain, over time, the mechanics of bringing your weapon up to your face, as well as your brain being proficient at, at recognizing when it needs to process or consciously process different information, the two go hand in hand to make it just as natural as if you did it on your primary or strong side. So like I said guys, this is not an easy game. It's about sitting down, thinking about what you need to do, breaking down what you need to do, physically and mentally, and then practicing, practicing, practicing until again, your brain creates neural pathways that support those actions. And it's only through actually exposing yourself to that, uh, those bodily actions, those mental cognitions, uh, you know, for a long period of time, over a long period of time until you'll get actually proficient with it. And then again, it feels like second nature. So again, guys, I hope these tips helped you take some points away from that. Mirror what you do on your strong side to your support side. Consciously take a look at the information that your eyes and brain are processing. Combine those two things together in a dedicated and driven form of practice, meaning that you're consciously aware of what you're doing and why you're doing it and how that's coming into your brain and how your brain's processing it until you become exposed enough to the action to feel comfortable doing it just like you do on your, on your strong side. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed and found useful this newest installment of Robo Philosophies. As I said, uh, I do think it's fundamentally important that you practice reaction side or uh, support side shooting. It doesn't really matter what label you use. What matters is that you become proficient in using it while shooting a firearm or airsoft weapon to become a full spectrum user of these tools. Uh, and again, like I said, that comes down to practice, practice, practice. There is absolutely no easy way to do this except the repetitious practicing uh, that you need to maybe focus on doing. So use the tips I gave you to help you practice and learn how to be more comfortable on your reaction or support side. In terms of other content, I do have a ton of reviews and gameplay coming up. Uh, I will be going to American Milsom's Rebel Yell 3, as well as American Milsom's Faded Giant 4. So be on the, the lookout for new gameplay footage as well as new reviews soon. So I do want to take a quick second to thank my two most awesome sponsors, being Enola Gay Tactical Smoke Grenades and Red Wolf Airsoft. Now both of these companies provide me support in such ways that allow me to do more airsoft, but more importantly bring you guys more gameplay, more reviews, and more philosophies to enjoy and learn from. So big thumbs up to both of those companies. Please do take the time to check out their websites. They're linked in the description below. Now whether you did or didn't like this video, I kind of want to know about it. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. I love the conversation and feedback. Now in terms of that feedback, let me know what kind of philosophies you may be looking from me in the near future. Hopefully I can get to some of these philosophies and help you guys with the needs that you're asking for. And if you could do me a huge solid, and that is like, 
subscribe, and share with all your friends. It keeps me happening in this YouTube game. And as always, guys, keep having fun playing Airsoft, being good community members, defend what you love. Later, guys.